G'day listeners, after a break, it's back on air for the Three Feet Radio Show, and joining me in the studio today is my co-host, Luke Herbert. G'day, Luke. Uh, g'day, Ben. It's really great to be back. You know, I survived a case of the flu that was knocking a lot of people for six, so it's good to be back in the studio, and, you know, what's the update on your coffee machine, Ben? The coffee machine's still broken, but I'm in one piece, but most importantly, joining us today is former Australian captain, Anne Sargent. G'day, Anne. How are you today? I'm good, but I'm a bit distracted now by the talk of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I've, already, I, I've already had a couple this morning, so I'm right to go. But oh, well, just, you better fire for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just to get things going here, the Australian Diamonds last month in the um, World Championship final, they triumphed. 58-55 to claim a third consecutive world title. It was an amazing final and it was a great spectacle for the sport, wasn't it? Look, it was. It was just, I guess, a dream come true in terms of promotion and organisation and, of course, from the Diamonds' point of view, four years of preparation towards that point. Um, from a bigger view of the sport, you know, um, just an amazing event in terms of staging and the way there was uh, the ability to interact across um, different um, installations and, and things that are out there for the kids. So it was it was amazing to watch. It's the first one, to be honest, Ben, that I've ever just watched. <laughs> um, from the years of playing in them, then the years of commentary, uh, this time as a national selector, I walked in with the crowd. It was amazing to get a feel for what our fan base is and just how passionate they are about the game, their knowledge of the history of the game, which I sometimes think we forget. Um, you know, when we're marketing and promoting, but uh, it was a real buzz to be in and around it. Um, of course, as a former player, hard on a sleeve, as a selector, I think the first emotion was absolute relief at the end of it to watch them play so well um, and to see them uh, achieve success was relief first up and then just absolute euphoria because, you know, a lot can happen. We all know in sport, it doesn't matter what you do, things happen. So I just, it was amazing. And, and there's no amount of having won many of these before that can ever take away from the excitement of the next time and the next ambition and the next win. So I think there's a great deal of responsibility on our players um, to perform well, but I think they embrace that kind of tradition well. And I'm so proud of what Lisa and her coaching staff and those girls achieved and the manner in which they did it. And do you think there'll be a flow-on effect with next season's ANZ Championship in terms of greater levels of interest? I think I think the ANZ Championship kind of stands alone nowadays. I find, if anything, it tends to take the lead on many things and we have a responsibility to make sure we have a balance between what it offers and the international program, which is being addressed as we speak. That whole broader picture is being looked at and I think you'll be listening to exciting things across the next 12 months. I think the ANZ um, just owns its own space. I mean, if you think of it, if you flip it and think, um, the stadiums are sold out now, so there's an expectation of bigger and better venues for that event. Um, that can only work within the capacity of stadiums. So that in itself is an issue. Wonderful to see that Queensland, you know, now have the backing for a new netball-only facility. If you think about um, the role in developing the Diamonds, their preparation, their ongoing rapport and connection with the Australian Diamonds coach, Lisa Alexander, and her staff has to be planned in and around consideration of ANZ franchise work and timing. So... Yes, I'm sure it will flow over, but I think ANZ is just a successful model in itself and is almost, whilst it's part of the bigger picture, it commands a lot of respect and space anyway. Uh, if we go back to 1991, when um, world champs were held in Australia, as they were known then, um, same thing, brilliant preparation leading up to it. It's the first time... Um, We've been involved in securing, I was captain at the time, in securing Johnson & Johnson's support for netball. That gave a home international series uh, for each year leading into the Sydney World Champs. And that was hugely important because it gave a platform, it gave an expectation to the public, it familiarised with those that didn't know the sport about the main, the main protagonists, the main countries, the main players. So that was hugely successful and there was the same level of euphoria. I know, I, I called the final and I know for months and months after, people would stop me in the street and want to talk about it. And then it plateaued a little bit. So I think lessons are learned always along the way and we've seen 
massive change in um, the promotion of the sport in this country. New Zealand, of course, is exemplary in the amount of media coverage they have. And yeah, we have a great vehicle, but I think there's been a lot of thought going into how to um, involve the public and roll on forwards, maybe having missed the boat a little bit, even in successful campaigns that have gone before. So I think we're going to see um, a very clever handling of what has been a wonderfully successful event and result for Australia. And just, Dan, staying on the ANZ Championships, the player movement in the off-season that we're currently in hasn't really been as, as active as it has been in the last couple of years, but the big one's been Laura Langman. What do you feel she brings to the Swifts? <laughs> oh, I don't know how to answer that one. I think she brings a huge... Look, put on, let's put on the table first an absolutely outstanding athlete. She stands alone in terms of the number of consecutive internationals played, which I can't even get my head around how that's humanly possible. She's kind of the far lap of netball and a wonderful, wonderful athlete. And to be honest, I get torn between, of course, being a Sydney girl and um, I can wear my selection cap very honestly and carefully and thoughtfully when I have to view the overall picture. And of course, there's a human level that, that at one level, of course, is interested in Sydney and how New South Wales goes. Um, so I'd have to say, um, I always wonder when there's a big signing like that, are we bringing through pathway players? Are we doing the service to our juniors in that, you know, was it needed? Uh, you know, the likes of Abby McCulloch, who had a brilliant uh, final at wing defence, and, and other mid-quarters, Tyler Davies, others before her, have tend to have a little bit of exposure and then not been picked up in the second year. So that, of course, is something I would contemplate in my own head. She, of course, brings... It's a beautiful um, addition in terms of experience and her profile. Um, it will be a test for her, won't it? She comes into a group where she has such a huge um, following and place in netball to go into a team where there are others of the same ilk and you have to work out how to balance yourself within that team and how to be productive as a team member first and foremost. So I, I guess for me, it's part excitement to see the first Kiwi cross the Tasman to play, which I find fascinating, really interesting, because there has been a culture, as I understand it, that they need to be approved through Netball New Zealand to pursue that. So it's groundbreaking. Uh, it's exciting in terms of acknowledging what a fantastic athlete she is. And the rest of me is interested to see how Rob balances the line makes use, good use of Laura without restricting use of other talented players and, and, and I'd love to see some genius pushed in there as soon as we can. So I'm kind of mixed on it. And just before we move on, I just want to chuck a hand grenade your way, but do you sure. think Laura will fit in at the Swiss better than Jade Clark did? Oh, I, I think I think it, it'll be a very similar fit. I, I think um, what they, that's, a, um, that's a task, isn't it, for Rob to and, and you know, the general public would be throwing up questions like, is this to cover Kim Green's legs? Is it to, will Paige Hadley get ample court time? What happens to Abby McCulloch? That's the trick. Um, you know, experienced players that are worth their salt in any team um, will be honest and forthright and then should at the end of the day take what's given to them in the best interest of the team. So I would have to credit Laura with that kind of attitude. I would have to credit Kim Green and Paige Hadley with similar attitudes. Um, I don't know. I think we'll see a very similar use of her. But I, I don't know. I haven't discussed it with Rob. I don't know his mindset for how the team will balance. Um, I'm probably more interested in what happens across the line at goal defence and the flexibility of, of that circle and how it works. It's a beautiful line, whichever way you look at it. And I don't really know the answer to your question. And, and you talk about uh, Paige Hadley. I think that her and Kim Revillian, from what I saw anyway, they certainly enhanced their um, reputations as um, good quality up-and-coming young, young, young players, um, not just for international level, but looking ahead to the ANZ too. Those two were outstanding, I thought, when they had the opportunities. Yeah, look, we've got so many stunning players. I mean, and some of them aren't in 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 the Australian diamonds, and that's the heartbreaking role that we play. I, and I know you watch the public is so focused on only their team and watching their team's games, and naturally have a passionate loyalty to their players, which I absolutely support. But when we step up to that next level, we of course know that, and it would bleed when we can't fit them all in. But it comes down to a structure for the diamonds that Lisa Alexander has in her vision and supporting. I mean, we challenge the thought process, we argue the thought process, and at the end of the day, we're there to support 
her vision with the best configuration of players to achieve that. So there's endless players we could talk about that, you know, aren't there. If you look at Rivalian, I think she consolidated herself well and truly in the past season. As we all know, she was selected to go to England before she played in an ANZ team because we've been watching her. And what we were watching was an athlete um, and an attitude and courage and conviction that we felt could well fit the diamond mix. So she was sent over when we had a lot of players injured and she certainly lived up to expectations. And I think she's crafted a game for herself that quite obviously sees everybody watching her take on Langman with, with holding their breath to see who's going to win this battle this time. And I think she's well established internationally. Paige, of course, is such a beautiful story from coming back from adversity and the knee injury. You know, she'd had a taste of being a diamond, hit with the injury, so she has to sit out. Obviously, she wasn't named in the Australian squad earlier in the season. Because there was a feeling, and not, not about not how good she was, but allowing time for an athlete to be fully fit to stay, take on the next level and to be really operating well. And I think by the end of the season, we saw that in her. And I thought, I agree with you. I think every time she had access to games at World Cup, um, she put in a fantastic display and gave further validity to her selection. And I think that opportunity will come for other players as well. You know... I don't know when there's ever an easy time when you're looking at, at, at the top of the pyramid, when you're looking at the pointy end of the plane. Obviously, great respect for the 12 players that did the job for the Diamonds and secured a world title for Australia and maintained world. You know, that is just huge. And so few get to have that opportunity. And then we're still celebrating that. But while we're celebrating it, of course, the brief is to be looking down the pathways to see what do we need to be tracking and tapping down the track? Because you can't leave that run too short. So whilst we're trying to celebrate these players, we have got an eye on ones that have just missed out, who we know are wonderful and what they can do, but also on others who haven't been exposed there. We need to have a look at them. What do they do in Diamonds Company, in the structures of the Diamonds team when they operate and they're on the road and they're playing international? So that's the task, and that's what we, of course, will be trying to do across the next few years. And just sort of staying on, you know, the topic of international netball, looking ahead to the Constellation Cup in October, can you see the New Zealand Silver Ferns, you know, wanting to gain any kind of revenge or payback for the World Cup? (laughs) I wouldn't call it revenge, but to answer your question, they will want to win every match. There's pride involved, obviously, at that level. And I'm sure there is an expectation from the Silver Ferns that they put a game out on a Sunday that was was excellent and deserved praise and was better than the Diamonds could produce. But when it came to the final, they didn't bring a full 60-minute A game. We, of course, saw them fight back and produce some wonderful netball by the end. And I sat there holding my breath, knowing we were running the clock, that trying to race against the clock, uh, thinking we were superb, but knowing the Ferns were going to run it back in because that's the colour of player. So naturally, there's hurt pride there. The reality, to answer your question, is there will never be a game, no matter what you call it, (laughs) Constellation Cup, Commonwealth Games, World Netball Cup, when you put those two together, that it's not played to be won. It just is how it is. It's ingrained in them. So, of course, this will be um, a series where they will absolutely, particularly in front of a home crowd, want to show their netball at their best for 60 minutes at whatever stage they're currently at with it, with whoever they expose to it. It's just a given. So these will be very hard games to win. So whilst, you know, Australia are proud of what they've achieved, they will go in there knowing it's game on again. And whilst it's a title they'll hold for four years and they are current world number one, they know they're only as good as, you know, the current game the most recent game, and they will be loath to let one slip, just as New Zealand will be loath not to take them on. And Anne, what did you take out of um, Waitamanu stepping down as Silver Ferns coach? It certainly was big news in New Zealand, and I think um, here it was big news too. I mean, look and looking at what happened in that World Cup final, do you think that was the reason why she stood down, or do you think she decided, no, I've done my tenure and that's it, I'm going to move on? No, I, I think um, you've got to pay respect to why. And I think with people of her calibre, um, it's not as much about them. It will be about the forward plan and the forward direction for the structure, for the sport, for the silver ferns. Uh, and I would 
would bet my life that that was something that she had contemplated well before, had in the back of the mind when the transition would work best. Of course, she has to factor in her own situation. I'm sure it would have been with the forward movement of the silver ferns taken into account and her decision that that would be the right time to announce it and move on. I don't think it's a knee-jerk reaction in any way to the final. And you're just sort of, we are spending quite a bit of time on the World Cup here, but during that <laughs> event, there was a special documentary program shown by Fox Sports in the yeah. lead up to the Australian Diamonds Games, and one of them featured you. Uh, it must have been great about reminiscing about old times, was it? <laughs> well, yeah, I haven't seen any of those. I think they were called Centre Pass, and I've just, every, everybody has stopped me when I was walking to games or out to dinner around, you know, the event. They would stop to want to talk about it because they loved it. They couldn't get enough of them. And I haven't actually seen them yet because in the hotel that I was staying, it didn't run that particular Fox Sports channel. So I never got to see any games. I saw them live as opposed to seeing them then. So I have a tape on its way to me that, uh, that captures all of the segments. I, of course, remember going out to Fox Studios and recording the interview. We spent a long time doing it. And I'm not sure whether you're aware, but Keely Derry, who is a former Australian rep um, and former world champion, she is um, a senior producer for rugby at Fox Sports, naturally has a close eye on the netball. And, and she laid those interviews down across time, you know, got people to come in, which is just a much-needed thing in our sport. Netball Australia, interesting enough, so that, you know, is doing the same thing. And, of course, you can't do it in a quick snap of the fingers, but they are laying down archival docos and interviews, working firstly through um, the Netball Australia Hall of Champions and then through the World Cup captains and, and they're gradually building up the database so that eventually they'll be able to click on the site and go into different eras and, and, and different greats of the game and, and hear how it felt for them in their moment of time and to, yeah, just to give the personal touch. So I know, in, well, Kiris and I played together in terms of World Championships in 87 and Australia didn't win that one and it was interesting. I think we've blacked most of it out. <laughs> When we were talking about that section, we'd be off camera going, do you remember that? And I go, no, I think I've blacked it out. She goes, me too. So there's certainly a bit of selective memory going on. But um, I know from having hosted lots of things and done those interviews myself in broadcasting, it's absolute gold to sit and talk with a Joyce Brown or a Caldo or, bef or people before that to mm. hear their, their memories of how it was. And, and I know, you know, with the 83 team, which is probably my go-to point of three different world champ, um, that for me has the best memories um, and those girls are like sisters to me. And I think also the learning process as a person and an athlete under Joyce Brown were significant things. Um, and, you know, you don't get to talk about the fact that you might have been throwing up for days from food poisoning or that you're having cold chows and thongs or the reality check of the comparisons of the era. So it's gold when you hear it. It's, it's magic to listen to. I think it was Norma Plummer I heard talking about in a big buds or something like that in, in sheets and just things you never hear about. But also, they wore all of that like, well, what's it matter? And it's a bit like your question about how New Zealand approach these upcoming matches. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. When it comes to that point and the whistle goes, all you know is it's the ferns, it's the diamonds. And, you know, it feels like it's the pinnacle and you've got to nail it. So I just think they're wonderful. So the more we can get that kind of thing up and around, here's, here's the go, boys. Get a regular segment on it. Start doing the same thing because people just can't get enough. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Anne. I mean, I love I love talking to a lot of the old timers that used to play many moons ago, even just casually and socially, and just hearing about what it was like back in the day. For example, when they used to um, have to get the ships for overseas tours and that sort of thing, <laughs> like the, like back in 1963. I mean, Joyce Brown's told me about that, but that's for another day. Just moving along, how's everything going with um, with netball clinics? Is it starting to ramp up again now? It's post World yeah. Cup. Yeah, we um, we by demand are running some end of season stuff in these next group of holidays. We've been sold out for about four weeks. <laughs> We've got another two weeks to go. <laughs> so I, I think, you know, we have been like that for a while in the last few years that people were asking and I said, but it's after the season. So we, we put a few on and, and I just, the kids can't get, if it's done well and you, they, they know they're coming to a safe environment, a happy environment, a place they can sparkle and extend their skills. And if the parents know that you're passionate and caring about it, I don't think you can go wrong. And we're certainly very lucky that, let's not talk how many years then, but I'm um, pretty lucky to be able to be um, 
rolling along and still doing them uh, and being selling, you know, selling out every time. So we have really strong support uh, from sponsors in, in Mission Foods and Chemist Warehouse and others, and just great parental support that they just see that as a great place for kids to go. So I'm really, really pleased that so long ago. It was a mission for me to try and bring some of the top players and the passionate people in our sport close to the kids and do a... I wanted to marry my teaching background with my sporting profile and to challenge my brain on how to structure something new and, and get it rolling. And um, it sticked along constantly. It's sort of gotten bigger and um, and uh, broader and been copied a million times by a million people. And as you know, there are a lot of different versions of it going, but... I think we're doing something right if we're still ticking along. And um, I, you know me, Ben. I really love and am challenged by the point at the end of the plane and the work that's mm. done there. But I'm equally passionate about, and I've just come in from a session we do a before school academy three mornings a week. And um, their faces when you show them something new or they've nailed it, it just you know, fires you for the rest of the day. So it's really cool. And I'll go from that. I think the next next exciting thing will be Constellation Cup and, of course, um, Sport Australia um, Awards Night. Always a wonderful place to be uh, mm. mid-October. So lots of exciting things coming up. And just for the listener, what's your website address? Oh, website is www.ansargent, and it's Anne with an E, and Sargent's S-A-R-G-E-A-N-T dot com dot A-U. So um, a lot of our stuff, of course, is New South Wales based. However, people that have a, you know, that, want us to consider me and a couple of others coming in, they just need to frame that and if we can, we will. It's a juggle between other commitments but um, we do as much as we can. All right, Anne, thanks very much for uh, chatting with me today and also with my co-host Luke. It's much appreciated. Um, you know, boys. And I, I always appreciate when you stop, you always stop and you always say hello to me. As I know especially at NA Awards Nights, you're, you're always uh, coming up to say hello. I appreciate that and um, hopefully I'll see you around Constellation Cup time. I'll be here in Melbourne for the Test Match. Yeah, cool. That'd be great. And you and I might run into each other and David Jones when I'm hunting for yes, the Melbourne Cup or something. You never yes, know. Yes, we might do that again, you and Warwick. Starless to the stars, Ben. Yeah, I try to be, yes. <laughs> I, me- I remember when I saw you and Warwick in Burke Street there, yes. Yeah. Very random indeed. Well, uh, I look forward to you boys starting your archival interviews across time and getting yeah. all those up. Um, if I can help, give me a bell. All right. Thanks very much, Anne. Cheers, boys. Thanks. You're listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. From our studios come special guests and netball commentary, exclusively on YouTube. You've been listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. Tune in next time for more special guests and netball commentary exclusively on YouTube.